shade that's going to have more water resistance to it. Absolutely. Yeah. And then when you're buying a big bulk like that, the big reels, the difference in quality is pennies. So why might as well just spend a little more to get that quality if that's really yeah, those are, I mean, I, I find myself using heat shrink uh, tubing less and more the, the butt connectors, which we'll get into. But yes, if I buy my heat shrink tubing, yeah, it's worth getting the marine grade. Even if you're not going to use it outdoors, it's it just an extra seal. It's not going to hurt you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, so that's my next thing. Would um, We all use these more as the heat shrink butt cr- crimp tools mm-hmm. or the solder sleeves. Um, yeah. Yeah. I use the, the basically the pink ones you can get off Amazon for, I think, Three three hundred or so for like fourteen dollars, seventeen dollars range. Yeah, like that. some prefer the butt connectors. Mm-hmm. Some prefer the solder connectors. I prefer the butt connectors because I don't have to deal with any. I mean, you, either one you have to deal with heat, but with the butt connectors, it's just a quick crimp, and then you use a heat gun, and it'll seal right up. Um, and also the cost difference between the two, because you're going to be using hundreds of these. Yeah. Um, it's cheaper to buy the butt connectors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I love them. I, like I, we were saying earlier, we're using our soldering arms less, and this is what we're replacing them with, these kind of simple uh, connections. Me personally, I prefer um, – Oh, see, now I'm, th- I'm thinking about it. I'm looking at your pictures, and I'm totally <laughs> – I lost the name. Scotch Locks. Oh. Uh, I prefer Scotch Locks. Okay. Yeah, uh, that, we haven't even thought about those. But, yeah, those are really uh, hard to describe, but they're basically like a, a button. Uh, that's how I describe it, right? It's yeah, like that's a, a fair, a, a fair Kind of like a, a push button uh, that you put the wires inside, and then you, you basically press down or use pliers to press the button down, and it, it has little – uh, razor blades inside of it that actually not only cuts exposes the the wire and the sleeving um, making a connection so you don't have to do any kind of pre-cutting or anything like that before putting the wires to the button correct and uh yeah so you don't have to you don't have to strip them uh, you can just cut them put them in there uh they're the dolphins that you show it's exactly the same concept as a dolphin the, but the difference with the scotch locks is it has a hard sealed outer plastic shell uh as well as when you get the exterior rated ones they're jelly filled so as you crimp it down it extrudes that jelly it's completely sealing your connection and so it's got the hard outer shell the jelly on the inside it's it's great and I love, I've had conversations with people about these forever that they say, I just don't trust those. That's, that's not what anybody else uses. And so I feel like I can't trust them. And my response is that Scotch locks have been used in the telecommunication industry for decades, decades. They have been the primary uh, function inside telecommunication boxes, which are outside and they have a great fail rate. So you know, I, I, they were great for me in in the past, and then I'll continue. Yeah, I've, I know the ones you're talking about since you know I, I've I've done some wiring myself, um, I, and the ones that I've seen typically have like a you can only fit like a relatively small gauge wire in them, um, or you can buy ones for different gauges. But uh, going back to the dolphin connectors, uh, a lot of people aren't aware of these, but you can fit uh, a variety of gauges into these, and they also have that sealant, and it will. Um, crimp down a wire. And so you, there's a lot of people where it's like, oh, I need to do an emergency repair outside and I got to get my portable soldering iron or all this other stuff. And it's like, no, 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 you can just use one of these. You just cut the wire. You don't even have to strip it. You just stick the wires in, give it a quick um, crimp with uh, just a pair of pliers and it's done. So it's really good for emergency repairs uh, or if you're just really lazy. So when I was building my arches, I didn't want to get out the soldering iron and do all that. So I just used dolphin connectors and called it a day and not a single issue. Yeah. uh, I agree a hundred percent. Those quick issues of I've got traffic building up and uh, I see a line of pixels that went out. I will run out there quick and you can literally just cut out the one pixel that is bad and take your, for me, it's the scotch locks, which are essentially the same concept as a dolphin. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I just stick my wires in, boom, crank it, crimp it. I I bet I can patch a prop, cut a pixel out in ninety seconds. And you don't even need a special crimper, just just a pair of pliers. Yeah, correct. That's great about that's, these. That's it. Yeah. Yep. That's, I would give the recommendation though, having used a few hundred of them, if you crimp them with with channel locks, it's better than like a flat nose plier. 
the reason I say that is because if you, when you crimp it, you need to crimp it square and straight down. Not you don't. Whereas pliers, if you put something square in it, you kind of hit it from an angle, and you got to be careful of that. If if you're mindful of what you're doing, you'll do it fine. But if you're in a hurry, you can do it wrong, and then you've essentially ruined it. I think the the next tool we're going to talk about is a uh, is a multi tool. Something with those dolphin connectors, you can almost you know do the whole job with just a multi tool do a lot of things with also i think that's the swiss army knife of uh this trade it's having one yeah it's always good i mean you're gonna have a lot of tools and you do need specialty tools but it's always good just to have a good multi-tool in your pocket that you can use for a little bit of everything so some people prefer the victorinox some people prefer leatherman's really depends on on your needs i mean a a multi-tool is very personal uh for my needs i actually prefer the victorinox but for other people they may need more of a leatherman so Totally depends. I use a Gerber. That's the uh, name brand I prefer. Swiss Army. All right. So, uh, Jason, what is, what's next for us? I think we should go into so, more of like the bringing everything out, what you're going to need. Yeah. So this is actually uh, one that my wife got me for, for Christmas. Uh, I'm kind of, you know, one of those typical guys that's hard to shop for. And she found this thing called a bucket boss. So what you do is you get your typical Home Depot bucket and it's, it's almost like an apron for your um, Home Depot bucket. So you, you put it on it and you can just throw a bunch of stuff in the middle of it, but you can also throw a bunch of tools just hanging on, on the outside. And you could just pick it up by the handle and move it to anywhere you want. Um, and it is, it is a really um, versatile product. And I, I have used it so many times. In fact, it's my primary toolbox, if you will. Same here. I just throw everything in there that I'm basically going to use. And I know where it's going to be because I throw it in there. And I have a bunch of hardware in there too, basically. Any extra little like lag screws, any little thing like that. Um, I find it easier just to sift through that big bucket than to go through a bunch of little bins in the garage. So what, what do you got for us? What do you all see you thinking, Vinny? Um, well, I, I like your list of the socket boxes. Um, that's the absolute lifesaver. I mean, I've got five, ten socket boxes right behind me on this <laughs> yeah, I see shelf. That. Uh, and, uh, I've got probably half a dozen up over in that corner. And then in my actual storage container, um, I've got a hundred more. So the, the socket boxes, um, spelled exactly as you think, sock it box. Uh, and they come in so many different sizes available on Amazon that are great for storing power strips, um, network switches, uh, just about anything that you just you need to put it inside of a sealed container that and still have cords coming out of it because it has its kind of little squishy area that allows the cable to come out, get squished in there very easily. And nothing's permanent. It just kind of lays in there and squeezes it, holds, hugs it, hugs it is the word I want to go with. And some pretty good seal. A lot of people have said to me they seem flimsy and lightweight plastic and they don't seem very durable and they they want to use more heavy duty rigid totes or stuff like that and I'm just like it's it's unnecessary that's overkill beyond because these are designed for this purpose and they work fantastic they are perfectly designed for the purposes that we need yeah the most the most important thing is to keep water out that is by far the most important thing yeah. and you can put cables in here put extension cords uh, you can plug um, network couplers. I know a lot of people when they're hooking up their multiple controllers and I see it all the time. Oh, I need to buy these specialty um, couplers that are waterproof for my network adapter. And it's like, just run a little longer cable and put it in a socket box. Um, Then you don't need to do that other stuff. And I use these for Christmas. I use these for Halloween. And I've had, you know, last year in Southern California, we had tons of rain and they were bone dry. And yep. Even though these can cost like 10 bucks a piece, it still saves you money. Yeah. And and you can get these. I recommend actually getting these from a local store around the holiday season. You kind of see them in the alleyways. Um, you can get them at the local hardware store. Um, so I guess uh, the next thing I kind of want to just go really quick is obviously a, a work belt. You kind of want to have those. Um, I, I personally actually get like a really nice um, a tool belt that I wear uh, that actually attaches to my already favorite uh, belt that I always wear. And um, I usually just keep really simple uh, if I don't want to carry around the bucket. Um, 
yeah. So everyone's got to have a hard uh, tool belt. I feel like. Yeah. You can even go to home Depot and they have just a small little apron. It's a dollar 50 and just throw it on your waist and you could throw pins and, and other just small little tools while you're working around. Yeah. When my neighbor kid comes over to help, that's usually what he wears, <laughs> but it works for everyone. Work. Yeah. The um, ratchet straps as well. Um, you mentioned the the husky ones. Actually, I, I I buy a lot of those. I find myself using quite a bit of those all around my display. Yeah, ratchet s- straps. Uh, the husky ones from Home Depot. Pretty good brand to get. Yeah, really, really good deal too. You mm-hmm. get four pack for eleven dollars, and each one can hold a five hundred pounds. Yeah, and weather resistant. Also, Walter Monkhouse approved. Oh yeah, definitely. Actually, that's where I got the recommendation, and I used them on my mega tree and. Uh, perfectly solid. Yeah. So uh, Jason, what's next for us? What do you You got to have a label maker? Mm-hmm. You got to get yourself a label maker because you, when you're working on everything, you're like, Oh, I know what port this is. I know what connection this is. Five minutes later, you're going to forget it. Uh, next year you will absolutely forget it. So make sure you label everything over label everything. Um, I, I cannot stress that enough. Make notes. <laughs> you will forget. Yeah. This is a great tool to have. I, I, and don't skimp on this either, you know, buy the good one. I agree a thousand percent. Get a brother brand, for example. Um, there's a few that are, are good. I agree 100%. My personal one is the brother P-Touch Edge. <sighs> Cannot agree more. Get a good one. Mm-hmm. I went to Office Max and bought like a, a, an office one. <laughs> and yeah, don't do that. The, the labels that you can get to, to use on that one are just not really designed to be weatherproof for long periods of time. You get away with maybe two years and, and then everything starts weathering. So yeah, invest yeah, in that. Good quality vinyl uh, labels. Absolutely. Um, can we um, can we go back on your list a little bit? Yeah, I want to touch on, on earth anchors. Oh, yes, please. Um, and the reason I want to touch on that is because last year seemed to have been the year of mega tree failures. And the reason I think that that is, is because there's so many people that are getting into this hobby. They're starting to see the resources are available to learn Christmas lights. However, the resources were not available there for them to learn proper construction, proper engineering to be able to build mega trees. Um, if you're building like a 10 foot mega tree, it's, it's not that hard to screw up. I mean, you're, it's pretty easy to build. It's, there's not a whole lot you can do wrong. Once you start getting them up to 20 feet and taller, you need to engineer it correctly with good earth anchors. Um, and my biggest recommendation to you is start doing some research. There's a company called American Earth Anchors, AmericanEarthAnchors.com. Uh, do some research on there. They have got all the different styles available that, and they have spreadsheets and PDFs to teach you which ones are the right uh, one that you want for your purpose and your soil type. It is amazing website, amazing company. Uh, check it out if you're building mega trees or tall props and anchor. I highly recommend you guys. Uh, if you're looking into big mega trees or even just small mega trees, um, check out Walter Monkhouse. He is the go-to guy when it comes to mega trees and keeping things on the ground. And uh, his website is magicchristmas.org. And um, yeah, that's where I get my my advice for him. I mean, my my display, it, I just have an average size house, so my mega tree is like 10, 12 feet tall. Uh, it's not one of the big ones like he has, but. Uh, the first year I started doing the mega tree, I just counted the stuff into the ground with some basic stake anchors, and I had tons of wind, uh, and those things were popping out, and I found myself going out in the middle of the night and trying to keep them down. And so then I watched uh, the information from Walter Monkhouse, and he's like, hey, use the, the spiral ground anchors, use the ratchet straps. I did that. I put them in once. And through the whole season, I never adjusted them once. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I I plan to have an episode talking about mega trees and products that can assist you and super important things you need to know about mega trees. And uh, I'm definitely going to need to have you on, Vinny, because I'm much like Jason, have a very simple 10 feet uh, mega tree. But like, you know, you cannot neglect even the 10 foot mega trees. The windstorm could come out of nowhere. It's good to have the right anchors. Yep. I've got, uh, I've got three of them at 10, um, one at 16 and three at 20. Uh, next year we'll have one at 40 and 
Uh, I'll be honest, right now, the seven that I have, I don't have a single guy wire. So you don't, don't need them. We need to talk about that. But, uh, <laughs> but it's, it's for most people, use guy wires. Yeah, yeah, just, exactly. just do it. Have good anchors, good guy wires or ratchet straps and do it the right way. There's a, there's a reason there's a disclaimer. <laughs> good. Keep the disclaimer. In <laughs> anyway, so the next thing I want to talk about is uh, building enclosures. I mean, 